Hey there, acorn tubes. Everyone loves them. Yes, I've got the pointer again, which is actually just a paintbrush, but it's a handy pointer. Acorn tubes. Well, I was looking uh, through my uh, tubes that I was uh, gathering up and found one that I kind of forgot about. And it's weird. Let's get you normal acorn tubes out of the way. Because I found this guy. Now, you may say, well, gee, that looks like an acorn tube. Yes, it does. But notice, it's considerably, considerably uh, larger. Now, uh, I don't remember where I got this thing, but uh, it looks like some sort of power triode, a power acorn. Now, uh, it doesn't have much in the way of numbers. It's got handwritten. I don't know if you can see it there. 21-203. Now, I do not know who made this. And 21-203, I don't know what format that is or which company would have done this. Uh, what format that would have been for a... Uh, prototype or lab sample. Most uh, most uh, tube manufacturers had special numbers for prototype tubes, developmental tubes, special tubes. For instance, if you find a general electric tube that starts out with a Z or Z, that's going to be either a prototype or a special tube in some sort. Uh, they were developing a tube. They didn't know what number to get registered. They got to give it their own number, so they came up with, you know, whatever, Z1234, Z4567. RCA uh, typically used A. Um, let's see, Raytheon typically had the QK suffix. Sylvania was SD, I believe, or SN maybe. Uh, however, I don't know what 21203 is for, or who made that. No other markings on this whatsoever, but no doubt this is a developmental tube or a prototype. Lab sample, who knows? A um, little background on the acorns. Let's stick a normal acorn back in the picture. These were a very, uh, very early tube for VHF and, as they called it, UHF work back in in the 30s. These were developed, uh, I believe, by RCA. I think it was an engineer called George Rose, maybe? Um, around 1935-36. And uh, as you can see, very small, very small. Put my finger in there for uh, uh, a size comparison. And the advantage was it was much, much smaller than other tubes of the, of the day. So you could get very, very low capacitance and inductance by having these extremely short leads. And thus that means you could get these tubes working hundreds of megahertz. Wow, hundreds of megahertz. Uh, it was, yeah, you could get these things, you could push them to, I think, about 400, maybe 500 megahertz. Um, they were quite successful. Uh, because they could go where other tubes couldn't. So they were used in, for instance, early radar, early uh, VHF communications. Uh, the hams loved them. The ham radio guys loved them. There, were quite, there was quite the scene with uh, guys pushing the limits and uh, making these weird, weird transmitters and receivers with these, with these uh, um, acorn tubes. And, uh, hey, they worked great and uh, soldiered on until uh, basically World War II. Because, basically, the thing that killed the uh, acorn tube was the 7-pin miniature. The 7-pin miniature that we all know where that is. And they started coming around just it, during the very beginning of 1940s is, is when they started coming out. And world war ii they were used the seven pin mini was used in a lot of stuff in world war ii it kind of cemented its place it then of course turned into the nine pin mini with yeah the 12 ax7 which still around every guitarist in the world loves our 12 ax7s but uh yes the, the the seven pin mini is what basically killed the acorn off and uh 
So yeah, it, it, in the wiki article, it does say it mentioned something about the EF fifty killing the uh, the Acorn off. Well, not really. It was it was pretty much a sub mini. Um, so anyway, apparently, and I, at some point, someone decided, well, let's take this format and push the power a little bit. You can see the uh, the plates there, and yeah, this does look like a uh, a power triode. It has two sets of plates, but you can I don't know if you can kind of see. No, that's too close. Sorry. You can see there's the strapping that, that ties the two sides together. Uh, someone decided, let's see how far we could push this. And also, if you can see, I don't know if it's going to really show up on the camera, but yeah, this thing's got some hours on it. The getter is good. You can see nice shiny getter. But oh, you can see, let me get the pointer out. I don't know if you can see the darkening on the glass from where the... Uh, the spray of electrons <laughs> actually it's, it's probably the spray of cathode material and all that garbage uh you know came came through the 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 the, uh, the gap and the and the two sides of the plate and deposited onto the glass and uh, when you see that that generally means a tube has seen hours it's seen a lot of hours and yeah they probably stuck this guy in a lab somewhere and yeah they were probably they were probably in a rack of you know a hundred of these who knows who knows uh and let's let's see how far we can we can uh, abuse this tube who knows um, okay, now this particular tube it does have one of the symptoms that acorn tubes, unfortunately, is a bit of a flaw in the acorn design. You can see that pin right there is slightly cracked around the glass seal. Now the vacuum is still good because you can see the, the, uh, the getter is still good, but yeah, this thing is going to go gassy sooner or later. Um, I have not stuck it into a socket, even though, oh yeah, notice, this is one of those rare acorn tubes with seven pins. Hey, let's get it centered there. Seven pins. Very few acorns had seven pins. Uh, why does this have seven pins? I don't know. It might be, uh, to, uh, uh, since it's, it does appear to be only a triode, perhaps, yeah, I don't have any data on this, obviously, perhaps, um, some of these pins are uh, basically doubled up. Who knows? But there are such things as seven-pin sockets. And believe it or not, this is one of the rarest things you'll ever see, the rarest tube socket you'll ever see, a brand-new seven-pin seven pin acorn socket. Uh, they are almost unobtainium. Uh, I got this in an estate that I cleaned out some time back. But, uh, yeah, brand-new. Anyway, that's just a show-off. Um... This guy, uh, yeah, one of the problems is I'd like to kind of fire this up because, yeah, it's still, it still has a bit of, uh, uh, a bit of va uh, vacuum there from the good getter, but, uh, I, I tried to put it into one of my tube testers to just light the filament up and, uh, um, just fool around with it, see what I could do with it, but it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit because these pins are a bit longer than the production acorns and the cutout on the metal chassis of the tube tester on my TV7 and Hickok uh, 530 mumble. Ooh, I don't know. I don't remember which 530 it is. I think it's a 533. Anyway, um, it, uh, it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't fit. The pins are too long. So, uh, yeah, what might be kind of neat to just fire this up. But then again, well, what what's kind of the point? I don't really want to abuse it or anything like that it's it's kind of a curio but as you can see someone thought it might be a good idea to expand the acorn format so well okay well that's kind of just what it is uh neat kind of weird tube i i do have uh quite a few developmental and prototype tubes there's a little bit of a community that likes them um frankly they're not really worth that much uh, a lot of people say that, ooh, they're worth lots of money, but you know what? They really aren't. They really aren't. Simply because they're just a little too weird. You can't really do much with them. Um, there's almost never any data for, for any prototype or developmental tubes. Uh, almost no information, period. And like I said, I have none. I, I, this, this, is, this is what I have. That's it. Um, 
hey, if any of you guys have ever heard of a large format acorn tube, let me know. Leave it in the comments. It'd be certainly, uh, certainly be interesting to find out more about this guy. Or if you uh, know what the, uh, the format of the number, or even the number 21-203, it's in white ink there, it's probably hard to see, 21-203 uh, means. Um, yeah, I have no idea. All right, well, thank you for watching, and if you like it, leave a like. I'll try and dig out more of my weird tubes. Got a lot of them. And, uh, um, you know, let's get you centered there. <laughs> uh, share it around. Maybe, uh, maybe subscribe. And, uh, maybe watch some videos of the past. Uh, got a few other weird tubes in my, in my back catalog. All right. See you guys later. Bye-bye.